Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex City. It's up, Corbin. I'm Rick. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. It's so Thank you for watching Patreon, follow the official Twitter account, ring the bell, the Federal Notification Squad. Bye! And today, what are we doing? We're doing a movie review. And we're also going to need some therapy after this on your Kashi up uh, <laughs> binge that we're doing right now. <laughs> Man, this, uh, this man's mind is uh, wonderful and demented. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we reviewed at the highly requested one. We really, really wanted to. We saw the trailer almost a year ago. I know, and I remember loving the trailer and being like, oh my goodness, I gotta see that. Yeah, so the yep. uh, we, we saw that, and then obviously a lot of people said, go see it. Uh, no, it's an amazing performance by Nawaz, Anya Kashyap, Vicky Gushal, all Vicky that Gushal. stuff. Um, so uh, we watched it finally. The only place we could get it was on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> And I don't know if or you or you can you can buy the DVD on Amazon, but we weren't yeah. going to wait for that. Uh, there was, I think, two issues with music. I don't know if you've found that. Two issues? Yeah, I think it was. I don't think it was on purpose. I think it was the fact that we were watching on YouTube. The two times when he was uh, killing people. Uh, it's towards the beginning uh, when Nawaz is uh, doing killing, which. Which, by the way, spoilers, everybody, have already started. Yeah. Nawaz kills don't, people. Sorry. <laughs> don't, don't, don't watch this if you want to watch the movie and watch Anyways, the movie. I don't know if it happened to you, but the music no. went in and out when he was killing on certain parts? I thought that was intentional. I thought that was on your own. You decisions. can tell me if I'm wrong, but like, it was like going, like the music went high, low, high, low, high, low. I don't think that's on purpose. I think they were trying to avoid a copyright, is what I think they were trying to avoid. <laughs> uh, maybe. I thought it was actually just his choice to make it. It could be. In and out you can let out. us know. Anyways, sorry. Uh, obviously, starring uh, Nawaz and Siddiqui and uh, Vicky Kershaw. And uh, say her name for me, Rick. Uh, who played Simi? Yeah. Yeah. Sobita mm -hmm. Dulipala. Dulipala. And uh, then, obviously, another notable name we should mention is Anushka. Sani, who played uh, Ankita. She had a smaller role toward the end. Yeah. Um, but it's obviously a directed and written by uh, Anyard Kashyap. Um, we're, we're benching him right now, guys. Sorry. Uh, but the want to read the synopsis for me real quick? Yes. Uh, Ramana, a maniac murderer, finds a soulmate in Raghavan, a policeman, who inspects his murder cases. He tries to make Raghavan realize how they both are similar. Mm -hmm. I wish it didn't That's, say yeah, that, that, that kind of, that kind of I hate gives, that. The, the yeah. synopsis isn't great on IMDb there. It's, uh, I, find it, I find that synopsis to be downright Almost spoiler. Wrong. Word, yeah. Almost spoiler. Yeah, I don't yeah. like that synopsis at all. Anyways, um, but, so, obviously this was very requested uh, when this, this is a spoiler review, so uh, your initial thoughts, Rick, and then we'll get into the more of the details. Uh, the two got a lot of details because I, as I've been, if, if, if you'll see here in my notes, I mean, when I if I like a movie, I write down a lot of notes. Holy poop, and, man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I'll tell you the two two things. Number one, one of the most extraordinary, weirdest, and wonderful love stories I've ever seen. Right? It's uh, weird. <laughs> and it's a love story. Yeah, it is. Uh, and it is for me, I mean, we just watched it, so I'm in the afterglow. Uh it's one of my favorite films I've ever seen. It, it, it's like up I, there in the conversation for me of like my top three Indian films of all time. Really? I, I love, love, love this movie. Interesting. Because I actually told Steph, I said, I think I like Ugly more as a film. And I love this. Really? No, no. This, I, this, this oh, is, I like this way more. No, and this isn't saying that I didn't like this film. I really, I really, really enjoyed this film. Uh, I just, I think as a, a, a whole, as a film, the, the, the inner workings and all the different parts moving in Ugly worked. Um, and there wasn't anything that didn't work in this. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but that was interesting that you said that you like this one uh, uh, the, even more more than ugly um yes but i can i can rave about this one with you so go go right ahead okay i i find it okay let me just 
Let me get into the larger picture things versus some of the smaller nuanced stuff we'll talk about as far as the technicalities of craft. Let me get into the oh, larger oh, aspects. Oh, we'll get into Nawaz. You were going to get into <laughs> and the directing, everything. Yeah. So I... Uh, the larger aspects, for example, which I obviously are going to include, and we can start talking off with this brilliant man, writer, director. Um, he does, we talked about this with Ugly and the fact that he will take characters and he does to them things that Shakespeare did and making them more complex. But what made this for me a notch above ugly was that it wasn't just these, these characters had the complexity of real humans mm -hmm. and that, uh, it, it, there's two things they reminded me of of uh something shahid kapoor said about his playing uh kabir singh and we resonated with this when he said he can't judge a character when he's playing the character mm -mm. and that is something that anurag does with his character oh, he doesn't judge he, them at all he, he doesn't allow his audience to judge them no nope. um he puts them in a position where you think you know who they are and the moment he puts you in a position to formulate your bias he starts twisting it on you and then you realize wow i have a bias against that person and maybe my bias was wrong mm -hmm. and the other thing he does as a director is what i see why these men work together he's the director the way De nawaz is an actor in that they both will not allow you to stereotype them mm -mm. um and the overall message of the, the twofold message yeah. of Number one, uh, the smaller message was for me, uh, people living in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. And I want to, I would love to know if that's why he put broken glass in the final credits. Mm. I, didn't I don't know if that's that. why he did that's that. Yeah. I, I, I had that thought in the final credits as well as, um, he really shows you in, <laughs> He did it in Gangs, he did it in Ugly, and he does it in here. Uh, he shows you and makes you question the nature of evil and who is evil and why do you categorize them as evil. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, so it, anyway. It was almost um, philosophical. Uh, oh, yes. At a lot of points uh, to where obviously – Nawaz, it's he, and I understand now why. Because when I asked him if you want to play the Joker, he's like, "I've already, I've, I've already, already played it. it." And he was talking about this film, I, and I, I get it. I now understand because just like, especially the Dark Knight one, there's a famous line. Uh, everybody knows it um, that Michael Caine says. He says, "Some men aren't looking for anything logical like money. Some right. men just want to watch the world burn." And that's really what. Um, uh, Nawaz's character almost was. He was like he, he was like I killed these people on purpose, right? And I, right. I've, I've admitted it to you. And it wasn't for a vendetta. It wasn't for uh, for any, anything <laughs> except for one. He did one for a vendetta. Yeah, but ultimately he just said I do it because I like to kill. Yeah, he likes to kill, and there was no rhyme or reason behind it. And what I Correct. think, and they're also basing it off of a real serial killer that what hap um, that was around. Um, and so that's kind of how he was as well. So that's kind of, they were kind of inspired by that. Um, but they, what they were saying is this guy, he doesn't hide it. But and obviously, Anurag Kashyap is making a bigger point in terms of um, law enforcement or people that do it under uh, legally. Uh, oh, anybody. Yeah, anybody. Anybody who who's convinced themselves that hmm. uh, that's one of the things I love about both Ugly and this. But this does it for me at a much higher metaphysical level in terms of him presenting a mirror to you and not only causing you to reevaluate your entire judgment bias, mm -hmm. but reevaluate yourself. And he constantly shows you uh, you may not think this. But everybody has within them the capacity to do the most heinous evil thing. And if you don't, you're self-deceived. Mm -hmm. and, and, and who are you to judge somebody else? Because when you get and in many respects, I, I found it extraordinary that and this is due to the writing, the directing and the brilliant genius of the actor Nawazid and Siddiqui, man. Mm -hmm. This character. Tell me if this was your experience. I went from being very very uncomfortable and uh, afraid of this character to looking at him and going 
is, are you a freaking anti-hero? Are you the protagonist? How did that happen? I kind of, I was, I, I look at, especially characters with actors that I love a lot. I look at them a lot with love a lot of time. Like that's why it, <laughs> I know it, you it happens in the same thing when I watched Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. I got yeah. so happy when he was just murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> And it was happening in this too, but it, obviously he was ridiculously creepy, and and my wife hated him, obviously, um, but she loved the performance, obviously, but um, but she hated him, and especially when it was there was hold on, well I'll get into the was in a minute. Um, yeah, sorry. we'll get there in a second. <laughs> uh, I'll get there in a minute. Uh, but I wanted to finish off. I uh, one other thing about Anirad and the whole philosophical thing. Um, yeah, I love that he makes a film that you don't know like a lot of people will see a film like this and like i don't know who i'm supposed to be rooting for like who's the right. who's the good guy right and i love that i love I that he makes a film and it seems like every single film so currently like it even happened in sacred games with sometimes you thought sartage was going bad uh right uh, and, and and all that kind of stuff but he makes it sort of like every single character in here if you're rooting for them they have their flaws and they're a great character there and i love that because it's very human <laughs> in the way he creates his characters i yeah. love it no, i do too yeah i do too and a little other small things because we'll, we can spend we could spend nine hours talking about nawaz um i thought i thought the film like uh, ugly he grabbed me instantly mm -hmm. with with saying of who the murderer was, and this is not his story. Um, I'm instantly gripped. I also think um, uh, I, I, a big applause to the makeup on Nawaz. Oh, it was phenomenal. I was like, because it's... that scar <clears throat> was so perfectly done, and he was highlighting it in some of the shots he had of Nawaz with the lighting and the close-up so you could see it was actually raised a bit from the scar tissue and indented it it was small makeup has always been for me more important than big makeup it's why I was so happy the Revenant one for makeup because mm -hmm. it was such detailed small close-up tight facial makeup yeah and that scar on Nawaz was just perfect makeup it was he and he going into Nawaz. He in this this might be my favorite and his best performance to me, uh, and that's saying a lot because everything I've seen him in has been incredible. But he kind it, the only other person I've seen do it like we've talked about is Daniel Day Lewis, and he made his bones kind of almost fall differently on himself in this one. Uh, yeah, man, <laughs> uh, this this is. Um... Nawazid and Siddiqui's performance in this film is for me, and I would tell this to anybody who's talking to me about acting, it is at the same level as uh, the legendary performances that people talk about, which would be Heath Ledger's Joker and Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, Brando's Godfather, um, Daniel Day-Lewis's uh, Bill the Butcher, uh, these iconic Al Pacino's Scarface. Mm -hmm. This is the first moment he was on screen. I wrote this down. Mm -hmm. Opening frame. Nawaz is gone. Yeah. Uh, and and gone, like, I'm confident if I was on set with Nawaz Adin, um, I suspect, and based on what we know from his book and other things, he was pretty much in, in character most of the time of the filming because he had to be. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're if you're playing a, playing a psychopathic killer, you have to be. And I know that this role took a massive toll on him personally. I don't know that I would have been very comfortable around him. He would have made. I was watching the actors opposite him, especially the women, and thought they're not acting. He's he's giving them enough that they don't have to pretend to be afraid because he's extraordinarily disconcerting. It was so. Uh, this performance was so incredible. Incredible. Because, because the, the reason he's so incredible is because, because Nawaz, and he obviously he's played a lot of in India, they're called negative roles, right? Um, but he, or evil, right? He never plays his characters evil. 
he never plays a character period yeah he he yeah like a lot of people that um aren't as experienced of actors will play try to play evil they'll try to be evil like in their mannerisms and their they'll try to look a lot of his characters seem very innocent which is why they're so menacing and so uh creepy because he has he almost has an innocence about him at times and you're like yeah he can't and then he just goes off and tries to hit a dog with a (laughs) i'm I'm gonna tell you something that that is gonna be controversial to some Mm -hmm. for in my book in my thespianatic dictionary Mm -hmm. i think what he did with this character was a more Herculean attempt at artistry than what Joaquin Phoenix did with Joker, and here's why. Mm. This is the sole reason why. One of the most beautiful things about Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is the is the side of him that for someone who's a psychopathic killer, you actually empathize for the guy and care. Uh-huh. And you actually can see, though you don't agree with what he's doing, the rationale behind why he does what he does, because in many respects, it's not nature as much as it was nurture he's a product of the abuses he's had to receive all of his life mm-hmm. and he may have t- he may have turned out different right mm-hmm. i don't think anurag gives us that liberty with this character in his script i think this man is criminally insane yeah there 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 can be that argument um but and I mean, and, and 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 because of that I, i'm sure you've seen documentaries of the criminally insane um, the people who actually in brave wavelength testing show zero signs of emotional connectivity and empathy, um, who are definitive socio and psychopathics. Yep. Uh, this character is that. Yet, that. yet, mm-hmm. there's moments in there <clears throat> I'm feeling a sense of sympathy toward him, and it was mind-boggling to me that I could feel a sense of sympathy for a definitively psychopathic, criminally insane, evil character. And that to me is the combination of the script and the brilliance of Nawazuddin Siddiqui being able to do what he does in this. He's he's one of yeah. the most extraordinary actors I've ever seen. Yeah, Steph brought up the fact that um, with the scar, she doesn't know if what, what well, obviously we don't know where that came from. I don't think we got that explanation. But she says no. he might have gotten brain damage, uh, and that Maybe. Could've, that could have been a, a, a reason for him to do what he does. Who knows? That's Maybe. obviously just a theory. Um, but the one of the most my favorite one of my favorite parts, and he did it a couple times. Um, Whenever he was talking to the police the first time and, and confessing, right? And trying, oh, yeah. Tr- trying to get them yes, to. Yes, One, yes. the entire scene was incredible because I was just like, he was effortlessly just talking about what was going on. And I was just in train. I believed 100% what this man was doing. Um, somebody walked across frame. <laughs> and he just. Oh, really? He just stared at him. He stopped what he was saying. Oh. I don't know if you remember the part in, in the scene. He like he was murdered, and they walked. Somebody just walked over there, and he was. I don't. I don't remember that. And he it was uh, like five to ten seconds. He just. He just. He was so pissed off at the man who walked across, and then he just kept going about <laughs> what he was talking about. Um, yeah. It's, it's a little, and I think I. I don't think that can be written. That I think that. Was oh like no a, no! An improvised thing. No, the other thing that can't be written, which something that was written that I laughed out loud at was the last moment we have with him when he has his cigarette, but he still doesn't have matches. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, the, the, the thing that can't be scripted, which is just the, the work, the training and the gifting of Nawaz is his inner, his inner monologue. Mm-hmm. Um, his, I could see his inner monologue not being logical i don't know how he did it if we were if we had the opportunity to talk to nawazid the first question i'd want to ask nawazidan is when did you know you reached the place that your inner monologue was as incongruent as what anurag scripted for your character where and it's what i think caused him to have so many problems and had a hard time recovering from the role because i saw the inner monologue of his character and his justifications for what he was doing being so psychotic that mm-hmm. I don't know how I don't know how Nawaz 
was able to disassociate his own frame of reference and then get back into it later. Any actor who did that clearly would have what he did a hard time coming back because his inner monologue, everything going on behind his eyes was psychotic. Uh -huh. yeah. He was psychotic. Yeah, just in, in, in the looks alone. And then it, every single time he went into a room, the entire scene when the kid was tied up was just yeah, oh. so difficult to watch. Oh. Um, and then he just, with no remorse, just killed him. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, so how about, how impressed were you with Vicky in this role? I was very impressed with Vicky. He, obviously, we have not explored him enough. I know that. Yeah. Uh, and we get accused of that, and I'm sorry. It's not on purpose. It's just what the way our, the, our movie watching has gone. It's not because we don't like him. We've loved him and everything we've seen him in. This was obviously, like we've said before, we know him as Vicky from Uri. That's how we were introduced to him, so that's how I see him. So to see him in, in this type of role, and I know he does these types of roles all the time, um, but we haven't seen it, and I, I, I really, really enjoyed his performance. Uh, I thought it was so interesting um, to, to see the way Anurag kind of weaved his character through the entire thing. Uh, and then to bring it back to the uh, the, the love story that uh, between them, uh, yeah. So yeah, I I, I I thoroughly enjoyed Vicky's performance. Um, yeah, to me, a testament to Vicky's <clears throat> performance being so strong is the fact that here he was in a film opposite a man who had created a character that, for me, is one of the greatest characters I've ever seen on film. The Wazidans character in this that uh, Vicky kept me. Uh, on the screen wanting to I what when I watch Dark Knight every moment Heath Ledger's off the screen all I'm doing is waiting for Heath to come back mm. watching this I couldn't wait for Nawaz to come back but I was thoroughly engaged with what Vicky was doing yeah he definitely I thought, held his own with uh, Nawaz in this one and and that not to say he couldn't hold his own obviously he's a he's a very talented actor but he he definitely held his own with uh with what Nawaz was doing and he too though he didn't play somebody psychotic I'd love to know how difficult this role was for him and, and the way he treated the women Vicky was in uh, this pretty psychotic Vicky's character he was, was pretty psychotic. He was, but he was drug-induced psychosis, not definitively sociopathic. That's true. You know, and and that would have a whole other realm of challenges. It would be more akin to DiCaprio's challenges in Django mm -hmm. that he had being being uh, treating all the black people the way you know DiCaprio got physically like sick the way he had to treat the black actors on set. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt also that I found one of the most powerful moments in the film was the moment he had with his dad when his dad oh, yeah. and he um, face off. And they just stood there for like a minute. Stare. Like Anurag, was, Anurag wasn't giving them any any help at all. I, I, I guarantee he just let them go and it was who's going to back down. Yeah, he's he was probably like, I'm just gonna let you guys go, and if you feel whenever you feel you need to walk off, that I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happened. Yeah, who wins? Yeah, yeah, incredible. That, I wouldn't be. I love that moment as well. I also want to talk about uh, what's her face. Um, say her name again. Um, about the ladies. Yeah, no, uh, no. So yeah, so hundred percent. Say her name. So be. Uh, so Bita Dulipala. Yeah, I thought she did really, really well fantastic like i like she's one she has a great look and like the, so the camera like really loves her um and i i was she what else is she in maiden oh she's in maiden heaven bar bard of blood son of a beach okay in ghost stories she's in ghost stories as well okay um but yeah i i thought she did really really well every single oh, time man. she was on screen she was like sparring with vicky a lot uh, 100%. And, and, and I loved it. Uh, she, I loved her character as well. The, just the character, the way it was written. She was uh, not backing down. She wasn't scared. Of, like the whole one where Vicky was trying to kill him. Like she was threatening her. Yep. And then she just yep. took the call and then she came back. She was like, wait, where were you? <laughs> yep. And so she's like, yeah, you don't have the power here. I have the power. <laughs> yep. I uh, thought she did I great. 
I um I think that um I, I would love to ask him this question as well. Um it it would shock me if uh Anurag Kashyap was not involved in casting from day one. I don't think he's the kind of director I could be wrong, but I get the feeling he's not the kind of director who just lets the casting director go make the choices and kind of choose from the cream of the crop and then send them to him. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like his actors ensemble, as an ensemble are always so freaking good that it's either one of two things. He's either so in tune with it in the same way that we understand if we've learned about Satyajit Rai has been so enmeshed with the selection mm-hmm. or – he just so completely trusts and knows that the casting that's going to be done by Mukesh Chabra, the casting director who also did Gangs, mm. man, the casting in Ugly and in this as an ensemble, every oh, single person. And Sakura Gams as well. Yeah, everybody in, and everybody in Gangs, which is also, a massive cast. Also, I saw in Ugly, people thought I didn't know how to say Sacred Games. Like they're like it's English words. Around. How do you not know what sacred games is? Sacred we call it sacred games, you idiot. Anyways, go on. Yeah. <laughs> um. So let me just hammer off my bullet points and get off my high horse. Uh, <laughs> I thought in that scene where Nawaz had his first monologue, I thought the direction was extraordinarily brilliant with the use of actual rain and radio when Nawaz is talking about rain and radio in his monologue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought the uh, uh, a, a common uh, theme that I found in Gangs and Ugly and This from Kushyap is he likes to show the depravity in us all, mm-hmm. in every single person, and he he does so in an, in an astonishing way without demonizing his characters. I, I don't. That's so hard to do. And make it believable. Uh, and 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 he, his scores as well. He will do the weirdest things with his music. Yeah, there's 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 like no symmetry to his score. You could listen to the score to this film, and every track you'd go, "This is from the same film." Yep, and it's happened. <laughs> it's it's happened in almost everything he's been a part of that we've watched is he has these unique parts where like you wouldn't think techno music would be playing here but he decides to put techno music uh right and so uh, it's something i would love to ask him about like uh like maybe he just wants to surprise people that that uh, that wouldn't be a shock to me is that me neither uh, but i'm sure it's a much more intellectual answer than that um, yeah than just i want to shock people uh <laughs> it, it, he 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 is he showed it in ugly he showed it again here and he showed it in gangs the man knows how to direct and he knows how to control when uh, vicky gets in the fight um with simmy is that that the character's name simmy yeah 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 when he gets in that climactic fight with her Mm-hmm. And she and all that we see because he's there's a lot of really tight uncomfortable shots. He we see her fall out of frame and hit the ground, and Anurag does not let us see. Mm. We know she we know she died, and we can make assumptions. And that's a that Hitchcock was the master of letting you know that what was scarier was not what you saw but what you can't see, mm. uh, and the control of that frame. As well as, in a similar way, he does that psychologically when the brilliance of Nawazuddin in that room saying, yeah, it was me who brought her home and my girl was there and I brought her into the back room and then my penis wouldn't get hard. And you're realizing... It was great. (laughs) He was watching the whole freaking thing. And it's a love story. Yep. It's great. It's yeah, that, that last part where he's just, I will just want to look into your eyes. Uh, yes. And I was like, oh, they're so cute together. <laughs> <laughs> they were made for each other because yeah. when, when he goes walking in and he's got the, the tire wrench from his truck, from his trunk, I mean, when Vicky, when Vicky goes in at the end and he's going to kill the girl who got away who saw and Nawaz said she needs to die. What that summarized at the end was 
they were made for each other. I can almost guarantee this didn't do well in in <laughs> India. Yeah, absolutely. Totally guaranteed this I don't know. Do well. I know he's a popular guy, but I can't I can almost guarantee most of his films don't do well, like box office wise. It, it, just because in India these like a lot of the films are much more happy and rom- romanticized, at least in Bollywood. Uh, yeah, as you, as you say that, I'm looking this up right now because uh, here's my suspicion. My suspicion is it didn't do well at the box office, but it probably got a standing ovation at Cannes Film Festival. Oh, I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, obviously we, we like this film a lot. Uh, it'd be interesting after we see all of his films, like where the, the final ranking would, I mean, I feel like gangs will still be that film was so brilliant it is but i'll tell you i'll tell you what and again i'm in the afterglow uh-huh. i th- this this for me is so it's so spectacular for me this mm-hmm. is my favorite on your Kashyap film really yeah wow that's surprising yeah i'm yeah. surprised no, obviously I'm surprised. see gangs is is so for me enmeshed in the in the gangster genre that it is it it is in the greatest of all times it's in the same conversations as the godfather and scarface and and goodfellas it's Uh it's an iconic one of the greatest gangster films ever made this isn't a gangster film Mm -hmm. uh this is the most this is the most warped love story i've ever seen in my life uh and because it's so daring and so difficult and done so well uh, I, I find this to be. Uh, uh, I would tell people, you want to watch one of the greatest gangster films ever. You've got to see Gangs of Wasifer. But if you want to see one of the most unique, uh, extraordinary performances by a director and an ensemble cast, and this man Nawazuddin Siddiqui in ways that, if you thought you liked River uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Joker, man, uh, I, I find this movie to be one of the my favorite films. Uh, man just of all i think it's an absolutely brilliant brilliant film well there you have it we both <laughs> love this film uh rick i think loved it even more which is surprising that i'm surprised well, I know for that, this kind uh, of film <laughs> uh i'm surprised no it's not that i didn't love it i loved it <laughs> no just, I, know, I think i think you loved it even more <laughs> i know which is weird for this kind of film yeah. it's usually the other way around yeah um but you know we love the man nawaz and uh so this film's amazing go watch it let us know what on your kashi up film there's a bunch there's black friday there's dev d dev d dev d there's uh gulal with that song um I think uh, it, I can't remember what else, but yeah, obviously he's got a lot. Yeah. And let us know what our next Nawaz film needs to be because you know because we're, gotta, we're gonna see them that. all. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for.